All right, I know exactly what you're thinking. They locked me up in this maximum, maximum degeneracy, degeneracy prison, prison because I was speed running too fast, right? You know, I was just playing the game too fast, playing, I was over the speed limit in this game. Well, that's actually not the reason. See, they locked me up for something like second degree manslaughter. Second degree, like, ooh, I guess the woke mob is after me now. Well, anyway, I get to hang out with my boy Mario here, who is uh, essentially a plank of wood. If a plank of wood could say things like Mamma Mia or... <laughs> or or check out the enclosed instruction book while i dedicated the first 18 months in here to grinding for the king boo world record i decided to be a little more productive and perhaps tell all of you guys about the interesting quirks of some levels in super mario sunshine from both a casual and a speedrun perspective. <laughs> you know, the naysayers like to go on about their pachinkos and their lily pads and their watermelons, and I may get to those someday, but I wanted to start with a level that is almost as overlooked as pausing, but perhaps more interesting, this stupid slide level. Yeah, uh, the average person who's played this game has probably spent no more than 30 seconds here. And yet, within speedrunning circles, this level has led to some surprisingly profound discussion and even raised some concerns as far as timing methods go. So, um, let's talk about that. Open salami. If you're a GameCube baby like I was, you might have had a similar experience to me after I ripped open my copy of SMS. I played the airstrip watched some cool cutscenes, they say among us in this one, and dropped into Delfino Plaza. Right out the gate, I turned the corner, and there it was. A green pipe like from the other games. So we're about 15 minutes into this exciting new 3D Mario game, and we're suddenly teleported to a multicolored ramp floating in the sky somewhere. Well, this is a video game after all. And what is this, a level for ants? I can barely even see Mario, especially on our old CRT with its protruding screen. Okay, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna dodge all this stuff. I'm just gonna jump for it. Now I'm falling with style, I guess. Uh, and I'm falling. And I'm falling. And I'm falling. Clearly, my initial impression of this game was through the roof. But seriously, there's something so strange about this whole ordeal that makes it so memorable, despite lasting 30 seconds. I mean, the game works so hard to establish the realism of its world before you're suddenly thrown into this colorful floating mess that's so nothing in terms of gameplay, it's almost otherworldly. Did you know you can reach the bottom by simply holding up on the control stick? Seriously. The beach pipe, as it's called, is in a peculiar position in the world of Sunshine speedrunning. I don't mean to brag, but I've got the world record on this level. Arguably. Technically. Look, there's a bunch of stuff I gotta explain. For the past few years, the Mario Sunshine speedrun community has been using the ShineGit in-game timer code as its official measurement for individual level speedruns on the massive IL leaderboard spreadsheet. It's called the Shine Gets Timer because the timer ends not when you touch the shine, but when you initiate the cutscene that says Shine Gets, or Shine, or Splendido, or whatever. Currently, my immaculate Beach Pipe World Record sits at 15.59 seconds. Alright, I'll come clean, because clean is better than dirty. My WR is merely a TWR, or Tide World Record. Yep, it turns out that our good friend Ouija also has this record. And Fetch. And Inkstar. And Slime. And what the hell? Over 20 people have this time. 
In the grand scope of speedrunning, several people tying the world record is nothing unheard of. It happens all the time in games like GoldenEye 007, though it's kind of expected in a game like GoldenEye where the in-game timer only tracks full entire seconds. Mario Sunshine's timer code has precision down to a hundredth of a second, but come on, the game runs at 30 FPS so there's gotta be like specific intervals of a few hundredths of a second separating each time, right? What's that? The timer can still land on every possible centisecond? What's that? The shine get timer we've been using all these years has inherent randomness? Oh, and you may have noticed that all those times have a silver background, but silver usually means second place. Correct you are, because a few months ago, a player named Hansel Panda got the first and only recorded 15.58, knocking out a 25-way tied world record in the process. Any run that results in these times has the exact same frame counts, but where they differ is in the pep frames. Named after JPEP, who's very fast and very French, pep frames are a quirk of the in-game timer that can cause variants of 1, 2, and maybe even 3 centiseconds, and it's completely out of your control. For instance, let's say that some people are grinding ILs of Shadow Mario and Bianco Hills. If player A gets a 15.98, while player B gets a 15.97, then player A got thoroughly and utterly pepped on. Plot twist, they both got pepped on by player C. Uh, then you got player D, who was actually slower by an entire frame, but hey, at least he still got the sub-16. And he, he pepped the, the shit, shit out, out of player E. The leading theory behind what causes pep frames has to do with how the in-game timer starts right before the cutscene begins to load. This load time before the cutscene can end at any random points between two frames, whether it's exactly at zero or just below a full frame. The closer the end of this load time is to the beginning of a frame, the more powerful the peppage, peppage, pepperage, pepperage far. To clarify my earlier explanation, despite the man himself being the one who performed it, I have no idea whether this particular time on Noki 6 Secret is the result of a pep frame or not. If it's not, then it would only be possible for a run of the exact same speed to be fast faster by 1 to 3 centiseconds. Conversely, if a strong enough pep frame was involved in this time, it would only be possible for the same run to be slower. In the case of Hansel Panda's legendary 0.58, it must have been a pep frame so exceedingly rare that it hasn't been replicated before or since. Though it is worth noting that this time was achieved on Dolphin Emulator, which may or may not emulate disk load times accurately, which may have been the reason this was possible in the first place, but who knows. So what, did I just like lie to you all about having the highly coveted beach pipe world record to fluff up my own ego? Well, for the time being, yes. However, there is an official new timing method in the works that would make Hansel Panda's 0.58 and all the 0.59s and 0.60s be considered official world records. Both Noki Doki, because it wouldn't be a Sunshine video without mentioning him at some point, and SUP39 developed a new timer called the Quarter Frame Timer, which uses a different mechanism that isn't vulnerable to pep frames. There's still a few kinks to work out before the Quarter Frame Timer becomes the official standard, but when it does, say hello to an over 40-way tied world record. You've probably gathered by now that achieving the Beach Pipe world record is trivially simple, especially for a seasoned speedrunner. I'll go ahead and explain both a simple method and a slightly less simple method to achieve it, and they both require the turbo nozzle. The simple method is to skip the opening cinema on the earliest frame, then jump dive on the first actionable frame, slide down to the edge of the slip while buffering the R trigger, then the turbo nozzle will go off until Mario is forced into a free falling state. Keep holding up, and if your timings and angles were just right, a perfect time is achieved. Then there's the complicated method seen in Ouija's personal best, by which he jumps into a down-angled Y-cam mid-air turbo nozzle. By jumping rather than sliding off, you're able to keep the turbo going without Mario entering his falling animation. The main idea behind this down-angled turbo nozzle is that it increases Mario's falling speed from 75 to a blistering 75.1. Factoring in the initial jump setup, this strat comes out to the exact same time as the simple method, so you should probably just use the simple method unless you want to be fancy or something, I don't know. Beach Pipe is one of the only maxed out levels in the game, along with a few of the Shadow Marios and the Bianco 3 Secret stage, which are likely impossible to improve beyond their current records. 
That being said, let me tell you about the time that the beach pipe record was once a 15.57. This record was set back in July 2020 by the absolute Chad, Modest Tomato. So how did he do it? He was playing on an emulated PAL version of the game. NTSC can only run at 60Hz, but the PAL version has a 50Hz setting which runs at 25 frames per second. Normally you can choose this setting before the opening cutscene plays, but Modest Tomato is using a practice code that takes you directly to the title screen. Consequently, he was never presented with the option to choose 60Hz and was blissfully unaware that he was using a lower frame rate. Alright, big whoop, he's playing a slightly choppier version of Sunshine. What's the big deal? Well, with a lower frame rate, the game spends more time rendering each individual frame. If the level ends before the last frame is rendered, then time can be saved over 30 FPS, though this can go both ways and end up losing time in some cases. For this reason, 50Hz mode is no longer allowed on the IL spreadsheet. Let's finally address the elephant in the room, this hidden ledge below the stage. Nobody in their right mind would ever fall into this hole because they'd simply slide off the lip and keep falling forward. You have to really intentionally try to go here, whether with a ground pound through the hole or around the side. In the Japanese version 1.0 of the game, it's extremely buggy, like it's coded for Mario to still be sliding for some reason. This buggy collision was fixed in version 1.1, which makes it easier to escape from here. Though it's still possible to escape in version 1.0 with some... finesse. Did you know it's possible to go from the bottom of the stage all the way back to the top? Although it requires the rocket nozzle because of this one gap, and even though rocket storage exists, which already makes gaining heights completely trivial, it's still possible without rocket storage. And what's up with these divider things? Are we playing Mario or horse racing? You know, Mario Sunshine did have a scrapped co-op feature. This was eventually turned into a ROM hack where one player controls Mario and the other plays as Shadow Mario using a special multiplayer camera that was found in the game's code, but never used in the final release of the game. Had that feature made it into the actual game, I guess there would have been some racing potential after all. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I plan to make more of these videos in the future about specific Mario Sunshine levels, so let me know which level you'd like me to talk about next. Peace. Special thanks to Chloe Howie, Anti Slicer, and all my patrons on my brand new Treatreon. Ah, see what I did there? It's through your generous support that I'll be able to hopefully make more than like two videos a year, so thanks.